Good afternoon and welcome to the regular council meeting for the City of South Fulton City Council. At this time, we will have the invocation by Pastor Warren L. Henry Sr., who serves as the city chaplain. Hello, everyone. If you would just join me for the attitude of prayer. For those of you who would like to stand, you may. If not, you may remain seated. Let us pray. Dear gracious God, daily you remind us that there's someone greater than us, someone who created us to be unique and to be special. From the time we gather to the next time, oh God, so many things happen to remind us that business just can't be as usual, that it must always have a change. Recording in progress. A change for the good for those who are here and those who are looking in, yet for the entire city of South Fulton. So we thank you ship for our mayor and our city council, for our city manager and department heads. We thank you for their wisdom and knowledge because every time, oh God, they do your will, we see you. So tonight, help us to see nobody but you. Help us to hear nobody but you. And when it's all over with, we will know that you have dwelt with us in this wonderful place. This we pray. Let us all say amen. Thank you, Pastor Henry. We will now have the roll call for tonight's meeting. The Honorable Catherine F. Rao, District 1. Present. The Honorable Carmelita Gums, District 2. Present. The Honorable Helen Z. Willis, District 3. Present. The Honorable J.C. Sebastian, District 4. Present. The Honorable Corey A. Reed, District 5. Accounted for. And the Honorable Natasha Williams, District 6. Present. And this District 7 is vacant. And lastly, we have the Honorable Mayor, Mayor Kali. Just going to talk. There you go. Uh, thank you all for coming out to our uh, regular council meeting. Uh, just a few quick housekeeping notes. Uh, we are on the decline with COVID, but we do still have testing available. So out in the lobby, if you get, came early, hopefully you got to enjoy uh, the photo exhibit in our gallery, as well as our maps. We have been doing redistricting. I don't have the city council maps out because we um, have not finalized those lines, but we do have new county commission districts and new state house districts. Those maps are in the lobby. And then just here, uh, if you go out the lobby to your left, you will see a table. Thank you to our partners, American Testing, uh, for providing COVID testing, you will be able to get those results in 24 to 48 hours. And lastly, it is our fifth anniversary. Uh, so let's just give ourselves a hand for making it five years as a city. Uh, our, our brilliant staff in Parks and Arts has put together uh, two incredible presentations for our anniversary. So we're gonna have a remembrance of the struggles towards cityhood here this Thursday here at the Southwest Art Center. You can go to the city of South Fulton, GA.gov website to RSVP. We're going to have a panel of uh, some of the founders talking about everything that it took for us to get to cityhood. And then Saturday from 12 to 830 at Wolf Creek Amphitheater, we will have a fifth anniversary festival. We got food, games, uh, uh, artists, vendors, market, and music, and, and so, so much more. So definitely come out. Again, you can find that information at our city website, which is cityofsouthfultonga.gov. And you'll be hearing about some more great things when we do our comments at the end. Thank you all so much, and enjoy the meeting. Yes, sir. The first item is item, well, actually, Roman number four, adoption of the council agenda. Ms. Clerk, I have a change. Want to remove the appointee to the zoning board from the consent agenda? Yes. 
So under item nine, I have that recorded. All right, I, I also have uh, one um, amendment that I would like to make. If council is open, we're going to have a discussion about our next URA meeting. Uh, we also might need to have a discussion about our June meeting schedule. We do have GMA coming up, so just wanted to add that. Um, I, would, I would like to add resolution on public comments to section 10, item 19, city council and charter changes. All right, are those all the no. changes? One more. One more. Uh, item number 20, um, it was reflected on the agenda as a charter change. It's actually an, an uh, amendment to the admin ordinance. It's not a charter change, and so it should be reflected as such. Um, the decorum ordinance, we did the first read um, last agenda. Question, is it their reason it's not on here for the second read? Yeah. Clerk Adams? Yes, yes, the, I believe the mayor uh, did not add that to the, this agenda. So is that proper and in order? Attorney Hyman, can someone make that unilateral de change, uh, decision when it has already gone through the first read? I thought legally when something has gone through the first read, it is supposed to automatically appear on the agenda as a second read, and then it will be a council decision whether or not we should remove that from the agenda. Ordinances should appear for a second read. Please add. All right, are there any other ad additions, amendments, subtractions? All right, Mr. Clerk, I'm going to ask if we could take, uh, well, the, the, the correction of item 20, we don't need to vote on that. We can just make note, is that correct? That it is not a charter change? I don't, I would defer to the city attorney, I don't think so. I think the city attorney's office drafted uh, that legislation. Right, it's not listed as a charter change, it's just under this section, city council and charter changes. So we just wanna make note that it is not a gotcha. charter amendment. All right, uh, so for the, could we take the, uh, each item individually, would you just sound those out? Yes, the, the first item was the removal of the board appointment by Council Mr. Bastion uh, is appointed to the Zoning Board of Appeals. All right, District 1? Yes. District 2? Yes. District 3? Yes. District 4? Yes. District 5? Aye. And District 6? Yes. All right, the next item Mr. Mayor, these formal uh, motion votes, because we would deem a motion and a seconder. I'm sorry, can we, can, I will entertain a motion to uh, approve amendment number one to the agenda. Point of order, Mayor. Is there a reason why we just can't approve the agenda as amended as we typically do, or is there a reason why we're taking a one by one? Yes, it is my hope that uh, an ordinance or a resolution of significance as is being proposed to be added to the agenda that we take those individually. There was some discussion about holding those items so that we could vote on all of them next month after our city anniversary Um, Mayor, there's one more change um, to the agenda I need to make. I need to pull something off. 
that'll give us more time, actually. I need to pull off the CVV. That was item number 20. All right, well, I'm sorry. Just hold, hold one moment, Councilwoman Willis, because we are on, we're entertaining a motion to approve the first amendment. You'd ask for a point of order, but we were in the middle of a motion, so okay. I just. I, yes, and so I, I'm going to ask uh, that we overrule your decision to um, take them individually and just vote on the agenda as amended, as we typically do. All right, I will, I will entertain that motion. So moved. Is there a but second? But I need to add one more thing to pull off to give us more time. Okay. Is there, is, oh, we'll do that. We'll get the second and then we'll second. end discussion. All right. Go ahead, discussion, Councilman Willis. Um, do you want me to just tell you which one I want to pull off? Yes, please. Okay. Mr. Mayor, uh, you have a motion and a second. Are you going to carry the vote? Oh, uh, that's right. Because I asked that we just uh, approve the I'm, minutes. I'm, I'm so confused. What I made a doing? motion to approve the, me, the, the uh, agenda as amended. And then I got a second, and so he's saying we need to vote on that. Okay, so that would not include the change that you're trying to make now? Well, it's an overrule to your uh, decision to take them individually. Okay, so we are taking the four that we've announced. Do we, we, are you announcing another one in discussion? Is that what you'd like to do? I Mr. Mayor, like the uh, motion on the floor is uh, to overrule the ruling that you made. Okay. Uh, so you need to carry that vote, and then we can... Okay. Handle each item as appropriate. Very well. District one? Yes. District two? Yes. District three? Yes. District four? Yes. District five? No. District six? Yes. All right. The ayes have it. Mayor, Councilman Willis. Thank you, Mayor, for recognizing me. I would like to remove from the agenda uh, item number 24 request. Approval of a resolution of the city, Fulton, to approve the First Amendment bylaws to the South Fulton Convention Visitors Bureau. I sent uh, two emails requesting for this item to be placed on the May work session. I'm sorry, hold on once. I requested for this item to be placed on the May work session, so I'm removing this off of the regular. Okay, that is item number? 24. Thank you. Okay, any more additions, subtractions, amendments? Going once, going twice. All right, we are going to have discussion on this amended agenda. Council Member Raul. No, uh, I move that we approve the agenda as amended. Second. Okay, Councilwoman Raul, are you in the are you in the queue? No, that was oh that was from the light. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, do we have any discussion? All right. I have this. Go ahead, um, Councilman Sebastian. I, I didn't fully quite understand which one of the items you had um, that you thought was not going to be on the agenda. Do you want to have the discussion? So, uh, per the, the emails that I sent out this week, I had asked that we would not include in this agenda the second reading of the decorum or ordinance which charges city council which could charge city council members and city employees up to a thousand dollars uh for infractions of the ordinance and the second one was a resolution changing the public comment uh, to, I believe, um, only allow public comment for items that are on the agenda and only allow citizens of the city to make public comment. I felt that in light of our anniversary in the next three days, I was hoping that we could not fight about these matters uh, in a public meeting three days before our anniversary so I had asked council, I took a poll to see if we could hold those items. They would be on the May uh, 24th council meeting agenda, 
along with the second read of the charter changes that are on this agenda for the first read so that we would talk about all of these changes uh, in one meeting and vote on them in one meeting after our city anniversary. Is there any other discussion? Yes, I was sitting there. I'm waiting on you to recognize me. Councilwoman Willis. Um, if you took a poll, I'm not aware of it because I did not get a poll from you, but um, the attorney just opined on the decorum ordinance. It is second read. That decision cannot be made uni unilaterally. You can't take an ordinance that went through a first read and just hold it off the agenda. That's out of order and improper. Okay, so just, just to respond, Councilman Willis, I didn't unilaterally remove it. I did send an email. I'm sorry that you didn't see it, but apparently we're going to vote on these items now. Uh, it is the reason that I wanted to take the items separately so that we could approve the less controversial items and then discuss whether or not as a body we were going to include these more controversial items that were not advertised in this agenda. But it has been the pleasure of the body to take this vote as a whole. And so if there are no other comments, we will, I'll go ahead and call for the vote. Yes, sir, we have a motion by Council Member Willis, seconded by Council Member Rob for five actions. Uh, first action is to remove the uh, board appointee to the Zoning Board of Appeals as offered by Council Member Sebastian. Second is to add a discussion item regarding the June meeting schedule. Third item is a, to add a resolution uh, regarding public comment uh, by Council Member Williams. Second is to, fourth is to add the second reading of the decorum ordinance. And fifth is to remove the CDB resolution uh, from the agenda. And it will only appear at the May uh, meeting. Those are the five items for you. All right, uh, District One. We're voting, correct? Yes. Yes. District Two. Yes. District Three. Yes. District Four. Yes. District Five. Aye. And District Six. Yes. All right, this amended agenda has been approved unanimously. Will you just let me know, Mr. Clerk, where where these uh, added items will appear? I know the discussion about the June meeting will appear, uh, it'll be item 26B. Can we just add uh, the decorum ordinance as 20B? And the resolution amending our public comment process as 20C. Is that all right with the body? Any objections? Uh, I do, because they're, they're not charter changes I'm, I'm fine if you take off the heading because those are I mean they're not related to the so topic. so let's let's just uh, let's if we could uh, mr. clerk if we could relabel um, item number 19 from City Council and charter changes to City Council governance yeah we will so note in the record City Council what does that work I hear. City Council governance. That's fine. All right. All right, Mr. Clerk. Please sign the next item. Next item, Roman numeral five, approval of City Council meeting minutes. Request Council approval of City Council regular meeting minutes from March 22nd. Request Council approval of City Council work session minutes. 
from March 8, 2022 and April 13, 2022. Request council approval of city council zoning public hearing minutes from April 13, 2022 and request council approval of city council retreat meeting minutes from March 10 to the 12th, 2022. I move that we approve all the minutes um, as um, noted by the city clerk um, uh, outlined in items one through four. So Thank move. You. All right, it's been properly moved and seconded. Uh, any discussion? Mr. Clerk, please call the vote. Roll call vote, Council Member Rob. Yes. Council Member Don. Yes. Council Member Willis. Yes. Council Member Sebastian. Yes. Council Mayor Pro Tem Reeves. Sorry. Council Member Williams. Yes. That item is approved unanimously. All right, Mr. Clerk, please sign the next item. Next item is Roman number six, number five. This is public procl proclamations. Mr. Mayor and Council, we have three proclamations today. The first proclamation is a proclamation recognizing State Representative Deborah Baysmore. Representative Baysmore, please come up to the stage. Thank you. It is my distinct pleasure and honor to stand before you today to give this proclamation to State Representative Deborah Baysmore, who is also my representative living in my district, um, in honor of the work that she did and acknowledgement of the work that she did to make it possible for me to be standing here before you as a city councilwoman. And so the proclamation reads, Proclamation, City of South Fulton, where State Representative Deborah Baysmore, a native of New York, began her community service as the founder and president of Concerned Parents, advocating for students at the state level. Her efforts earned her the prestigious Frederick Douglass Award for community service. In 2005, she moved to unincorporated Fulton County, now the city of South Fulton, and served as president of Old National Area Residents United, what we affectionately call ONARU. She was instrumental in combating blight in the community and labored alongside county leadership to have uninhabitable properties condemned and demolished. And whereas Representative Baysmore was entrusted as the state, Georgia State Representative for House District 63 in 2016. She currently serves on the Human Relations and Aging, Intergovernmental Coordination, Natural Resources, and Small Business Development Committees. In addition to serving as the Chief Deputy Whip for the House Minority Caucus, Representative Baysmore is also the creator, former chair, and now vice chair of the City of South Fulton House Delegation, a founding co-chair on the Georgia-Israel Legislative Caucus, regional director for the National Black Caucus of State Legislators, and a member of the Entertainment Committee of the Georgia Legis Legislative Black Caucus. All right, whereas Representative Baysmore began her work at the state level as the chief of staff to state senator, working under the Gold Dome and traveling to counties statewide to listen to citizens' concerns, address statewide issues, and develop invaluable partnerships 
Since being elected, she has sponsored and championed legislation to ensure the safety of Georgia citizens in their homes and communities, protect Georgia children from human traffickers, bring awareness to critical health issues amongst school-aged children, partnered with NAMI to address mental illness, expand health access to all Georgians, and put an end to predatory practices targeting Georgia citizens on the path to home ownership. She has also served on the Fulton County 2035 Comprehensive Plan Steering Committee. Representative Bazemore is a recipient of President Joe Biden's Presidential Lifetime Achievement Award and whereas as vice chair and subsequently chair of the South Fulton United, the parent group of the cityhood movement, then citizen Deborah Bazemore was, dedicated, was a dedicated advocate and instrumental supporter who provided steady leadership to the movement to give South Fulton residents the right to vote to incorporate. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the mayor and the city council of the city of South Fulton recognize State Representative Deborah Bazemore for her dedication, leadership, and committed service to the city of South Fulton as, it, as its five-year anniversary, and do hereby express profound appreciation to Representative Bazemore on this 24th day of April in the city of South Fulton, Georgia. Congratulations. Madam President, as I've always called you, it gives me great pleasure to present this to you on behalf of our city, right, for all the work that you have done. I know you and I have worked closely together before, and we didn't all the time agree, but we always respected each other, and so I thank you for the work that you did in helping to lead us to the creation of our city and beyond. So once again, congratulations on behalf of our city. Thank you. Okay, the mayor's saying speech, speech, speech. <laughs> and I'm about to cry. <laughs> um, I just wanna say thank you so very much. I appreciate it. Um, I'm excited to see from whence we've come. We have come a long way. And I don't regret not one day being in the trenches and being on the first organization that got that feasibility study done to allow you all to become a city and map out your own destiny. And that's what it's all about. So I thank you. I'm going to be short and brief. I know they say uh, candidates and legislators and politicians. I'm not a politician. I am a public servant. Are long-winded. I'm not long-winded, but I'm thankful. So I appreciate you all. Thank you so much. with the amazing, incredible, you're welcome, the amazing, incredible Swordfish, please join us on stage. I keep telling y'all District 3 is the place to be. <laughs> It is an honor um, on behalf of the city council and mayor um, that we honor you all. You all have what my grandma used to say made uh, lemonade out of lemons. Um, our pool is out of operation, it's in uh, restoration mode, but you still went and made us proud and put us on a map. 
And um, I want to present this. I'm going to read some, and I'll mirror read some. Thank you. This is a proclamation on behalf of the city of South Fulton. Whereas the city of South Fulton Swordfish swim team, led by the city of South Fulton Parks and Recreation and Cultural Arts staff, Alicia Reno, Bashir, did I say that right? Elisha and Desmond Montford, and whereas team members consider themselves to be more than just a team, but that they're of a family atmosphere. And whereas teamwork and camaraderie exists between time and inevitable, but determination and efficiency and are key in defying the odd. And whereas the resilient team was honored as Georgia Swimming Diversity Club of the Year, and whereas 12 swimmers qualified to compete at the State Games of America in Amos Des Moines, Iowa, during the 22nd National Competition, and recognized not only achievement of those 12 swim swimmers, but the team, and whereas they embody the, the imagine of our city and represent this state and this community for their outstanding achievement, and whereas they are located in Welcome All Park, District 3, and where it is only fitting to recognize our support for Maida and Mayumba Bello, did I say that right? I, uh, Maida and Mamuna. 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 Bello. Ava Burgess, Jacob and Kennedy, Corbin, Paris Craft, Madison and Nyla Dawson, Kira Idlin, Adam Garvin, you gave me all the hard names, Reese Gary, Timothy Glover, Franklin Hurd, Dries and Ryan Jackson, Micah Landingham, Allison, Keon and Kieran Morris, Theodore Ruffin, Ronald Sims, Skyla Speed, Jacob Sullivan, Cy Thomas, Brinson Urquhart, Amani and Lauren Williams, and Robert Worthams. Now, therefore be resolved that the mayor and city council of the city of South Fulton do hereby proclaim Tuesday, April 26th, as Swordfish Swim Team Appreciation Day in the city of South Fulton. Congratulations. Coach. Okay, hi. Um, <laughs> um, my name is Kennedy. Um, I've been on the team since like second grade, so that's like a really long time ago. I'm in ninth grade now, 15. Um, um, I don't know. <laughs> oh, thank you. All right, so again, for those that know me, I'm Coach Reno. I started the program back in 1999, and as you see, there's no limit. It's still flourishing, even though we do not have a pool to swim in. We'll find a way to make this thing work. With the, with the help of this great city behind me here, with this great, uh, my parents' staff, my lovely wife who's been with me through this incredible journey, it is just begin. <laughs> so again, I'd like to thank all of you, Mayor, City Councilwoman, thank you all for this opportunity. Uh, we gotta get to practice, practice at five.
We got one more. Would the Tri-Cities High School cast of Fela please come to the stage? While they're coming, I'm just gonna say a few words. This, this one is very special to me. I think as all of you all know, uh, Tri-Cities is my alma mater and I traveled, uh, I'll travel everywhere for our kids. I traveled down to Macon and for the uh, state championship uh, for our basketball team and I traveled to the Cobb Energy Center to witness this incredible moment. And uh, it is as follows. Whereas Fela is a musical with a book by Bill T. Jones and Jim Lewis, directed and choreographed by Bill T. Jones, based on music and lyrics by the late Nigerian singer and activist Fela Anakupalo Kuti, the father of Afrobeat, whose anthems like Zombie ITT and Water Get No Enemy both celebrate African culture and criticized the corruption of the 1970s Nigerian government while citing colonialism as the root of the socioeconomic and political problems that plague African people. Whereas Fela achieved critical and commercial success on Broadway with 11 Tony nominations and its two Tony nominated lead actors who originated the roles, Sa Galja and Sekon Simblo, were not only Tri-Cities High School graduates, but residents of the city of South Fulton. And whereas inspired by these fellow alumni, Tri-Cities High School Director of Theater Jade Lambert Smith, class of 2014, who had already brought challenging productions to the high school like the stage adaptation of Toni Morrison's The Bluest Eye, brought Fela to Tri-Cities, making it only the second high school in the world to ever attempt producing the show. Whereas fellow class of 2014 alumni and director of dance, Brianna E. Buckley, MA, MFA, who became a professional dancer at 16, while a student at Tri-Cities High School before graduating the Boston Conservancy and going on to complete a three-year dual MA, MFA degree at New York's University Tisch and Steinhardt Schools, took on the formidable task of reinterpreting Bill T. Jones' award-winning choreography for Tri-Cities production of Fela, and whereas Tri-Cities Fela, whose cast included students from the city of South Fulton, went on to receive seven Schuler Hensley Georgia High School Musical Theater Award nominations and win Best Director for Ms. J. Lambert Smith, yeah. Best Choreography for uh, Brianna E. Buckley, and whereas actor, singer, dancer, choreographer, director, and Tri Cities High School senior Nicholas Alexander Wilkinson II. Yeah who ended up in a musical theater class by accident, but whose hard work in theater made him not only the 2021 Atlanta NAACP Act So Dramatic competition first place winner, but also propelled him to beat out every male actor in the state of Georgia to win both the 2021 Georgia High School One Act Play Competition for Best Actor and the Schuler Hensley Georgia High School Musical Theater Award for Best Performance by a Leading Actor in Fela, and, and, and a full musical theater scholarship to the University of Michigan. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the mayor and the city council of the city of South Fulton hereby declare this 2022 Juneteenth, Sunday, June 19th, 2022, as Tri-Cities and Fela Day here in the city of South Fulton. They always give the microphone to me. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, City Council. What a blessing. I am a resident of South Fulton, so yes, I am very grateful to stand here um, with uh, Nicholas Alexander Wilkinson II, Brianna Bunkley, Tri-Cities alum, and our illustrious Magnet Director, Chandra Evans, who is also a Tri-Cities High School alumna. So this is really a huge blessing for us. 
And um, it is so wonderful to see what South Fulton High Schools are doing. And we're really grateful that you acknowledged it. We're happy to stand with Westlake and Banneker and Langston Hughes and Creekside. I didn't miss anybody, did I? We, it's such wonderful things happening in South Fulton. So please check us out, come to our websites. Uh, we'll let you know what's next for Tri-Cities High School. Um, is there anything I'm missing? Oh, and on behalf of our principal, Dr. Ethel Lett, I say thank you very much. <laughs> Mr. Mayor and members of council, that brings us to public comments for this evening. We have a total of, looks like 15 speakers, so that uh, takes us to our 30-minute uh, uh, limit. Would like to notify the public that speakers will be granted a total of two minutes each, and public comments will not exceed 30 minutes. Speakers will not be allowed to yield or donate their time to other speakers. Speakers must identify themselves and their address prior to speaking. Speakers may only address the presiding officer to, who shall observe all rules of decorum. No debate, disrespect, or obscenity shall be tolerated. The presiding officer shall rule any such individual out of order that fails to comply with the foregoing. Uh, members of the public, we have two uh, two microphones, one that will be here and then one over there. As your name is called, please approach the microphone closest to you and indicate your name, address, and district. The first three speakers are Kofi Kenny, Ms. Jewel Johnson, and Ms. Pamela Harris. Please proceed, Ms. Johnson. Good afternoon, citizens, mayor, and council. I'm Jewel Johnson, and I live at 4660 Orkney Lane, Atlanta, Georgia. And I said Atlanta, we, we all use Atlanta, but I'm in the city of South Fulton. And I'm here today to uh, address you all with the fact that I'm running for Fulton County Commission chair. That is very, very important because we don't have anyone on the commission that's from South Fulton. Given the fact that Fulton County has a budget of $1.25 million, and we have a commission chair that's giving our tax dollars back to the federal government, when we look at all the needs that we have in Fulton County, anything from homeless all the way to entrepreneurs, to citizens, to uh, AIDS patients, and you name it. And nobody cares. Nobody is fighting for what we should have. I promise you, as the next Fulton County Commission Chair, 
we will have no monies going back to the federal government. Fulton County is also holding monies that should be for city of South Fulton. And it's unfortunate that we have people that are to be, supposed to be representing us that are allowing this to happen. I want to let you know I will not stop until Fulton County accepts their responsibility for the retention ponds in District 2. Because the city of South Fulton should not have to bear that burden. And I will not allow that to happen. I'm asking you to please go out and vote for Jewel Johnson. And the early voting begins on the 2nd. Please go vote and vet your candidate. You need to go to their websites and find out everything you know about them, including the encumbrance, because we have people on the south side that look like us but do not represent us. Please vote Jewel Johnson, May 24th and the 2nd of May. Thank you. Ms. Harris. Testing. Good evening, neighbors, friends, enemies of South Fulton. My name is Pamela Harris. I live in Montclair. I'm from District 1, the District of Change. We have identified a Trojan horse that keeps hiding in plain sight. Typically, a Trojan horse is hidden in a sweet, innocent-looking host. They often perform desired or overt functions such as changing charters whenever it suits them, removing certified accountants and attorneys while on a mission to complete the desired needs of their host. While doing these dastardly deeds of manipulation and maneuvers, they continuously conceal their agendas with covert programs within the code to create back door deals. All eyes are on you, City of South Fulton Council. Please remember that everything has an expiration date. The constituents are now awake. We have identified the Trojan horse. Your time has expired. And District 6 representative, does someone ask you to do this? If so, why? Who? Neighbors, we must work in 2023 to bring better representation to our districts. Next speaker is Kofi Kinney, Richard Snellings, Brian O'Donnell. Is Kofi Kinney present? Yes. Okay, Richard Snellings, Brian O'Donnell, Sharadi Wright. All right, my name is Richard Snellings, 1980 Loch Lomond Trail. I'm in District 1. And before I get started, I just wanted to personally come up here and thank the city manager for helping me with an issue with GFL that I had about a month ago. Um, GFL did not pick up any of the trash on our street, and I reached out to the city manager, and she was able to get it done for us. So I appreciate it. Now, elected officials cannot abuse their office to infringe our residents' rights to free speech. Content-based speech restrictions are unconstitutional, meaning you cannot legally silence me because I disagree with your conduct or your policy. The highest court in the nation has declared that the voice of the people is the heart of democratic government and that you may not use your office to silence public criticism. Your desire to look good in all instances will never outweigh the public's, the public's constitutional right to challenge your actions. As a resident, I will not hesitate to take legal actions against any illegal attempts to, by any elected officials to silence me or, or my right to free speech. I encourage all residents to do the same. Now, Pamela Harris just left here, and as she was making her speech, I looked at the, the District 6 councilwoman, and she just did not care uh, what, a, what a constituent was saying. So I just think that's inappropriate. Um, she is a constituent, so her voice should be heard as well. So that's all I have to say. Thank you very much. Next speakers are Brian 
O'Donnell, Sharadi Wright, Arnold Jiggins. Hello, my name is Brian O'Donnell. I live at 7270 Ono Road in Palmetto, which should be renamed the City of South Fulton, District 4. First of all, I'd like to really commend the, uh, the Swordfish uh, swim team and the investment in the arts. I was fascinated by seeing that. We need to get that more out there in the public. We don't see that thing in the AJC, and it's, it's amazing. People talk about City of South Fulton, they don't hear about some of the good things, which brings me to some of my points. Zoning. There's going to be a zoning meeting tomorrow, and we need to really invest and look at the details on what we're doing and how we're doing it. Sometimes I think some of these large developers are using stereotypes to give us something that they think that they can sell, not necessarily what we want or what we need. I listened to a uh, presentation by Pulte Homes two months ago. They said, we want to build the same thing as District 4 as we built in uh, Peachtree City. They even put up a house. However, when you look at the data, it did not match what they did in Peachtree City. In fact, the homes that they're selling on the screen were so large they didn't fit on the lot that they're proposing to put it on. So as we're looking at these zoning departments or, or, or proposals, it's coming. The, the, the development is coming. The thing is we need to mold it to what we want and what we need. Don't sell out. Look at it, work with the developers, and get what we need, what we want, so that we improve the community, so that our kids don't have to win awards without a swimming pool. So people see that we're investing in the arts, in the paper, not on YouTube at a city council meeting. If we invest and we develop properly, we'll have the resources to do that. Thank you. Ms. Sharadi Wright, Arnold Jiggets, Sydney Jiggets. Good evening, citizens, mayor, and council members. My name is Charity Wright, and I live 4123 Big Sage Drive, Atlanta, Georgia, 30349, District 3. I am a wife, mother, and active kickball member of AGMB Kickball with the Southside Kickers League. Over the past two years, what started as a way to stay active and cope with postpartum depression during the pandemic has become family and a way to give back to my community. Southside Kickers has provided me the opportunity to build and foster genuine relationships that lay as my current foundation for my village. Women who used to be strangers in the grocery store are now my teammates, business partners, and even sisters, and I have Southside Kickers to thank for that. Growing up as an inner city youth from the south side of Chicago, programs such as Play SSK and Little Peaches kickball teams were either non-existent or unavailable to little girls that lived in the community. Um, it is my personal prayer and request that SSK be brought here to South Fulton to share the beautiful experiences that I have had with the other women and youth in our community. Being a part of a community and family such as Southside Kickers gives me hope and excitement for my three beautiful daughters that someone sees us and has created a way for us to have a voice and a place in our own community to have fun and be celebrated. Southside Kickers embodies the vision of family, sisterhood, and the hard work that's needed to be the change in the world that we all need through a simple sport such as kickball. Thank you, guys. Next to Sydney Jiggets, Latanya Jiggets. I'm actually Kofi Kenny. I um, oh. I had to go pick up my kids. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, so. two minutes, please. Uh, yes. Your name. Hi, my name is Kofi Kenny, and I live in South Fulton, specifically in District Three. I live over off of a uh, Green Tree Trail, um, right around the corner from Welcome All Park. I'm here representing Little Peaches uh, Kickball League, which is the only Black girls kickball league in Georgia, and I think in the state, not only in the state, but in the country, I'm gonna say that again, it is the only all black girls kickball team. My daughter who's here is Anaya, is a sixth grader, she's been on the team for three years now. This team has not only represented um, a sport for her, but it's also represented a place for her to build confidence 
um, to build community, a sense of community. And when we found out that it was going to be moved to Welcome All Park as opposed to Fairburn, we were so excited. In Fairburn, the park was beneath standards, I will say that. And many times the coach, AJ, would have to go out there and actually cut the lawn himself. He would make sure that the chalk was down for the girls. So when we found out there's a possibility that it could be here, right around the corner from our home at Welcome All Park, we were so excited. Not sure why this is even on the docket to even be voted on, because this should be a no-brainer, especially in reference to what just happened at Welcome All Park with the young man who got killed. Our kids need these types of opportunities right there around the corner from them. They shouldn't have to go to Fairburn. They shouldn't have to go to Cobb. They shouldn't have to go to Gwinnett to get these types of services for them. Um, the <clears throat> also, our kids, especially girls, I'm going to be honest, there's oftentimes not a lot of programs for girls. There's definitely, if my daughter was basketball, now she's basketball, there's a couple of volleyball things. But before this, there was not very many things that were out there. If you don't want to do basketball and you don't want to do volleyball for a girl, it's not much left. Maybe softball, but not much in our community. So what we are asking for is that you will vote for this to be in our neighborhood, which would be close to us and also be affordable and also create another opportunity for girls to be able to build their self-esteem. Thank you. Next, we have Arnold Jiggets, Sydney Jiggets, Latanya Jiggets. Uh, good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, my name is Arnold Jiggets. I reside at 5865 Village Loop, uh, city of South Fulton, Fairburn, Georgia. I'm coming to you humbly requesting that you vote up our program, uh, Little Peaches Kickball Play SSK. In 2017, this city, uh, albeit some familiar faces and some new faces, we were given a proclamation from the city by mayor and council. And that was regarding the work we've done in the community through our program. Since 2017, we've gone on to receive a community service award from Fulton County and a Parks and Recreation Partner of the Year Award also by Fulton County by uh, Commissioner Marvin Arrington at the time, who is still currently the commissioner. That represents the work we've done since 2017. We've gone on to create an incredible organization and program that serves the community. When I started this program, we went all around Metro Atlanta doing kickball um, for women primarily, and then we brought on a young girls program. Since then, we've serviced thousands of women through the sport of kickball. There's a few of us here today but please understand that there are many of us that represent this organization, and we just opted to come to you humbly and ask that you vote our program up. Thank you for your time. Good afternoon. My name is Sydney Jiggets. I live at 5865 Village Loop. I struggled to find a fun activity for exercise. I talked to my dad about it because I knew he ran a women's kickball league. I told him that I wish I was old enough to play kickball with the ladies because it looked like a fun activity to do. He quickly responded saying, I don't have a team for girls, but would you like to help me create one? I quickly responded, yes. Our Little Peaches Kickball League has been going for over three years now, the women from my dad's kickball league came on board and began teaching us girls the fundamentals of kickball and became mentors to the Little Peaches. Immediately, our confidence and self-esteem boosted. It, it is a well-known fact that people, that girls who play sports have a more positive body image and are less likely to smoke or use drugs. Girls who participate in sports also experience less sadness or depression. Many school sports teams have tryouts involved. You may or may not make a team. However, with the Little Peaches Kickball League that has served over 250 girls and even more women, it is a come one, come all type of environment. No need to feel ashamed if you don't know how to play. You will be taught the fundamentals of the sport. The best part for me is making friends and feeling a part of a team. 
So I respect, respectfully request that you vote yes to this program and incorporate this kickball league into the city of South Fulton. Thank you. Hi, I'm LaTanya Jiggets, and I live at 5865 Village Loop, and I am the parent of Sydney Jiggets. And I just also want to speak to the importance of this kickball league. I think it's important for us as a community to provide alternate options to keep kids healthy and active. This program allowed the girls to build lifelong friendships. It was a sisterhood where they encouraged each other through sport and academics. It was heartwarming for me to see the girls bond. During practice, the parents started to walk and exercise while the girls practiced. These girls will become women one day, and it's important for them to be able to have a sport where they can continue as women. Some of the parents joined the Women's Kickball League as a result of seeing their children. Once you vote yes, I invite you to come out and see the program for yourself. I promise you, you won't be disappointed. This is a one-of-a-kind program, and South Fulton should be proud to continue this activity. This program does not turn anyone away. Everyone is welcome, no matter the skill level. I have seen firsthand that this program is doing the work to keep kids out of trouble and motivated. The Little Peach's slogan is, I've got my sister's back. I think it's important for me to be an advocate for all of the children of South Fulton because they're worth it. Thank you. Next we have C. Denise Afant Chao. Please excuse me if I pronounced that incorrectly. Thank you. You have two minutes. All right. Um, my name is uh, Denise Fanchow, and uh, I live in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, but I am an advocate for children. I'm a grandma, and we have a little kickball community right here for you. And when I was listening to everyone speak, it, may, it took me back to when I was a child. We didn't have to have um, uh, funds to go out in the field and play kickball. And it, it's really sad that we're asking for you all to make a small investment for the social problems that occur today. The young people are in trouble and we need your support for this program. They don't have to be um, star basketball players, you know, you know, hitting the baskets and making home runs. Anybody can play kickball, and it doesn't take a lot. So it builds their character for self-esteem and leadership, and it also builds a sense of community. Um, I want to say to um, reinforce my concern about this, um, Frederick Douglass, and you all mentioned Frederick Douglass today when you gave the uh, award to the senator. And this is back in the 1800s. Frederick Douglass said, it is easier to build strong children than to repair broken men or broken women. Thank you. Next speaker is Adina Lofton. Adina Lofton. And after uh, Ms. Lofton is Sylvester Holt Muhammad. Uh, good evening, um, Councilman and Mayor. Uh, first, I want to commend you all for a great job you all are doing. 
and uh, I'm, I live in the Cliftondale area, Stonewall Tail, and I want to address the litter problem that we have here. Mrs. Gons, I'm sure you're familiar with all of my emails, and I'm sure that the public directors as well, not to put a damper on public works or anything, or no one else, but if we are to attract business in South Fulton, we have to have the visibility beautiful. If you go in other areas such as Sandy Springs, Car Parkway, or any other areas, before you get off the exit, it's beautiful. Why can't Cascade be that way? It, it just only takes for us to partner with someone such as AACID or anyone else that can keep up the neighborhood and to keep the most relevant, important areas where business resides clean and neat. Because I moved here because I'm expecting a future for my grandchildren as well as for their offsprings. But if we have a community that's filled with the litter and abandoned homes or whatever, who wants to come and be, uh, invest? So we have to have a visibility of a beautiful neighborhood and a beautiful area. And let's just start with the side streets in the neighborhood and start with the S's off the 285. Camp Creek is beautiful because Camp Creek have business in that area, but that's not South Fulton, that is East Point. We have Cascade, which is a metropolis area. It's Cascade, I'm from here, born and raised in Atlanta, went to Frederick Douglass High School. So I'm familiar with the Atlanta area. And Cascade is very well known, and it has a lot of our, our black leaders and politicians that live in that area. But why, when I give out the essay, it's grass sky high, and it's litter everywhere. If I want to do business here, how am I supposed to do business on Old National anywhere when I see litter and trash all over? So please invest in the litter control and combat this problem. Thank you. Yeah, Mr. Sylvester Holt Muhammad, and then the last three speakers are uh, virtual speakers. Sylvester Holt Muhammad, District 1, born and raised in the city of South, well, not the city of South Fulton, but the city of Atlanta, Bankhead, Simpson Road. When I decided that I wanted to move, I wanted to be close to where I grew up. Most of my relatives decided they wanted to go out to Decatur where they thought it was greater, only to find out it ain't there. But the city of South Fulton, I've been in this, this, I've been in this city for 33 years. I love the fact of coming up Cascade from Fairburn Road and riding, and can't make no right turn nowhere until you get to Fulton Industrial. But you can go to the left and you can find nice, beautiful homes and communities. And I like the fact that Cascade Hill subdivision was built by a black developer. I like the fact that, you know, you can go, you are centrally located anywhere you want to go. The airport of Douglasville, uh, uh, Cobb County. I mean, this is a beautiful area. But I don't like the fact that we're talking about bringing 280-some built uh, uh, apartments on old Cascade. A two-lane two street coming out of there, no back way out to get to the exit out. I mean, if we can't keep ourselves safe at a rally that's designed to stop violence, what you think it's going to be like when them cats start trying to get up and down Cascade and all type of uh, arguments and road rage and sound off? And then when they decide they can't go down Cascade to Fulton Industrial, they're going to come back up, come through. Cascade Hill Circle and ravaged like they've been throwing dirt and trash everywhere in our community. So I'm asking you, please do not allow that to happen. Please. I mean, you got the potential to be greater than Atlanta, that thought, and much greater than Decatur that ain't. But, <laughs> but we, let's do it, y'all. I mean, I love, I love the staff. Also, please, let's get some sidewalks here. I would love to ride my bicycle from Cascade uh, Fulton Industrial, all the way, all the way back down to um, what's that? Fabian Road. So, thank you, thank you, thank you. The bell sounded, huh? Yes. Well, I'm sorry. I just want to share that with y'all. Thank you, thank you, sir. Mr. Mr. Mayor and Council, I, I noticed. Uh, I thought they were online, but they're actually in the uh, audience. So, the next two speakers are Mr. Drew Demand and Robert Dawson.
Good afternoon, everybody, council, air. Um, I'm Drew DeMann. I live at 4640 Gordon Street uh, in the city of South Fulton, AKA Fairburn, um, proudly South Fulton. And um, we are also known as the Fife community. Um, so I've lived in South Fulton since the city's formation. My wife and I moved ourselves and our two kids here in 2017 in search of a greener place to situate our family. In those five years, a wooded property on Highway 92 has come up for rezoning and industrial development four times. Every time we've made our case against such development to this city, and every time y'all have gotten our back. Councilwoman Willis called me personally a couple of weeks ago to express her solidarity with our community. Um, the mayor has helped me in my efforts to enter into an open community-directed process to create an overlay for a Fife Historic District. And we have particular desires for how we'd like to see our community grow and develop. And so far, our developers have only presented ideas that made us stand together in vociferous opposition, and the developers leave looking a little worse for wear. Some of us recognize the pressing concerns and reckless clear-cutting of our precious forests or the continued privileging of the fossil fuel economy with the construction of more warehouses. Some of us just like it green and rustic the way it is. The seventh... <laughs> The seventh district needs some designated public green space. We have no park. We think we know where this should be. Fife is green and we are here to help South Fulton be greener and greener. The citizens have made it clear that we value sustainability highly, do we not? So let us make conservation efforts an ongoing objective. We expect to have a lot of agency in future development in Fife. All of our communities deserve to have agency in our development decisions. I hope we'll let that serve as a model of how we can build a great city sustainably where all of our communities get our needs met. Thank you. Is Robert Dawson in the audience? Okay. Next speaker is Ms. Uh, Councilperson Emeritus Naima Gilliard. Ms. Gilliard, if you would Gilliard. unmute yourself. Ms. Gilliard, if you would Gilliard. unmute yourself. Gilliard, if you would. Gilliard, if you Gilliard, if you Ms. Gilliard, can you hear us? Okay, I guess we'll come back to okay, Ms. Gilliard. We'll come back to okay, Ms. Gilliard. We'll come the next speaker is Mr. Rashawn Kemp. Mr. Kemp, can you hear me? Oh, I apologize if there's an echo. Oh, I apologize if there's an echo. Let me try to apologize if there's an All right, good evening, evening. Mayor Khalid, council members, and citizens of South Fulton. My name's Rashawn Kemp, and I'm a Democratic candidate to be your next state representative for House District 61. I live off of Butner and Tell and Tell Place, and I apologize for not being there in person, but I'm at the tail end of my isolation period due to a breakthrough case of COVID. Um, past my five days, but I wanted to take an extra day because I have a 10-month-old daughter and just want to keep everyone safe. Um, I just definitely want to take this opportunity to encourage everyone to get your vaccinations and be safe out there because COVID is obviously still real. And in my recent experience, it is definitely no walk in the park, even if you are vaccinated and boosted. Uh, but I wanted to address something that impacts the black community in a disproportionate manner. In America today, one of the main ways the criminal justice system targets black communities is through marijuana offenses. 91% of Americans support legalizing marijuana. And in fact, only 12 states, Georgia being one, have not legalized medical or recreational use. And according to the ACLU, black people are four times more likely to be arrested due to marijuana possession. These laws are outdated and disproportionately impact our communities. So please be mindful that marijuana is still illegal under federal law, yet many states have legalized it. So I hoped we had we would have received a progress update on the restorative justice issue discussed in the last council meeting. I was very encouraged to hear the proposed ordinance to pardon and not charge individuals for possession of an ounce or less of marijuana. 
And so I just want to speak out publicly in support of the ordinance and formation of the task force. My hope is that the task force is working full steam ahead and will be prepared uh, to present at the May 25th meeting. Until our state gets with the times, which I have called for as a candidate, I encourage, I'm very encouraged by the possibility here in the city of South Fulton. This city is a progressive city on the rise and I'm certain we'll make the right decision to honor the spirit and ensure a more equitable community for our citizens. Uh, so just wanna thank you for the time and say happy anniversary and even more importantly say go Little Peaches. Thank you so much. Mr. Mayor, the last speaker was Martha Sawyer. Are you on the call? I did not see her. So um, outside of council, former council member Gilliard, that was the last speaker. I didn't know if, uh, I know she was trying to call back in, but I didn't know how you want to handle that. All right, do you have her back? Uh, no, I do not see her in the meeting. All right, well, we're going to uh, move on. It's one of the reasons in-person meetings are so important. Uh, we have all these technical difficulties, but go ahead, Mr. Clerk, please sound the next item. Next item is Roman numeral eight, consent agenda. I'll take a motion. I move that we approve the consent agenda for the Tuesday, April 26, 22 meeting. As amended. Second. It's been properly moved and seconded. Thank you. Please call the vote. Roll call, roll call vote. Council Member Rao. Yes. Council Member Gunn. Yes. Council Member Willis. Yes. Council Member Sebastian. <laughs> yes. Mayor Pro Tim Reeves. Aye. Council Member Williams. Yes. That item is approved unanimously. All right, Mr. Clerk, please sound the next item. We are at the Alcohol license rezoning variants and modification cases for motion and vote only. Public hearing was held on April 13th. The first alcohol license public hearing is request council approval of alcohol license for Quick Mart 3850 LLC doing business as Chevron Food Mart for the retail sales of wine and malt beverages at 3850 Flat Shows Road, South Fulton, Georgia 30291. This is in District 5. Yes, sir. All right, I'll entertain a motion. I move that we approve staff recommendations. So moved. Second. From staff. second. Been properly moved and seconded. Uh, roll call vote, please. Roll call vote. Councilman Rob. Councilman Rob. Councilman Bergams. Yes. Councilmember Willis. Yes. Councilmember Sebastian. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Reeves. Aye. Councilmember Williams. Yes. That item is approved unanimously. Next, next item. Next item is item 12. Request council approval of alcohol license for Ziana Mart Incorporated doing business as BP Food Mart for the retail sales of wine and malt beverages at 3805 Flat Shows Road, South Fulton, Georgia, 30291. I'll entertain a motion. I move that we recommend as well. Then recommend it. Second. Been properly moved and seconded. Mr. Clerk, please call the vote. Roll call vote to approve. Councilmember Rao? Yes. Councilmember Gums? Yes. Councilmember Willis? Yes. Councilmember Sebastian? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Reeves? Aye. Councilmember Williams? Yes. That item is approved unanimously. Please sound to the next item. Next item is item 13. Request council approval of an alcohol license for Harry and David LLC doing business as Harry and David for the wholesale sale of wine at 5155 Welcome All Road, South Fulton, Georgia, 30349. This is in District 3. I will entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Properly moved and second. Mr. Clerk, please sound the next item. Roll call vote. Councilmember Rao? Yes. Councilmember Gums? Yes. Councilmember Willis? Yes. Councilmember Sebastian? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Reeves? Aye. Councilmember Williams. Yes. That item is approved unanimously. Sound the next item. Next item is item 14, request council approval of an alcohol license for AJSF Fairburn LLC doing business at Shell Food Mart for the retail sales of wet wine and malt beverages 
at 7745 Spence Road, South Fulton, Georgia, 30213. This is in District 4? This is uh, actually seven. District 7, Mr. Mayor. All um, right, thank you. I'm sorry. But I'll, I'll move for approval. I think this is a change of business. Second. So move. <coughs> Second. It's been properly moved and seconded. Thank you for that correction. Uh, please call the vote. Roll call vote to approve. Council Member Rao. Yes. Council Member Gums. Yes. Council Member Willis. Yes. Council Member Sebastian. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Reeves. Aye. Council Member Williams. Yes. That item is approved unanimously. All right, so on the next item. That, that moves us, brings us to item 15, which is a rezoning case, Z21-005. Request for rezoning from AG1 sub A and R3 to MIX for 74 single family dwelling units, 58 townhome units, 288 multifamily units, and 137, 300 square feet of commercial retail. It's located in District 1. I'll entertain a motion. I move to approve with staff conditions enumerated in the 426 22 staff report the rezoning from sub A, Ag 1, and R3 to mix for the purpose of constructing shopping center, multifamily, single family homes, and townhomes. In addition to the staff's condition, I hereby rate the following condition. Um, and further of advancing the traffic improvements of State Route 6, which is Camp Creek at S State Route 154 Camelton Road, the developer shall deposit 100,000 into an escrow account managed were owned by the city of South Fulton as a contribution towards the design of certain needed traffic improvements and that they work in tandem with GDOT to um, make the improvements outlined by the planning commission. Second. second. Okay, properly moved and seconded. Mr. Clerk, please sound the vote. Council Member Rao? Yes. Council Member Gums? Yes. Councilmember Willis? Yes. Councilmember Sebastian? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Reeves? Aye. Councilmember Williams? Yes. That item is approved unanimously. All right, so on the next item. Next item is item 16, Z21-016, request for rezoning from AG1 to CUP for 36 single family homes. This is located in District 2. I move to approve with staff conditions enumerated in the April 26, 2022 staff report, the rezoning from AG1 to CUP for the purpose of constructing 36 single family homes. So move. Second. Been properly moved, seconded, and third. Thirded. <laughs> uh, call the vote, please. Councilmember Rob. Yes. Councilmember Gum. Yes. Councilmember Willis. Yes. Councilmember Sebastian. Yes. <coughs> Mayor Pro Tem Reeves. Aye. Councilmember Williams. Yes. That item is approved unanimously. All right, please sound to the next item. Next item is item 17, it's a modification, M22-001, request for modification of conditions to Z20-008 to match Z21-016, providing clarity and pleading inconsistencies. This is located in District 2. I move to approve with staff conditions enumerated in the staff report from April the 26th, 2022 the modification of the zoning conditions for Z2020-008. So move. Been properly moved and seconded. Please sound the vote. Roll call vote. Council Member Rao? Yes. Council Member Gums? Yes. Council Member Willis? Yes. Council Member Sebastian? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Reeves? Aye. Council Member Williams? Yes. That item is approved <coughs> unanimously. All right, Mr. Clerk, please sound the next item. Next item is a modification M22-002 and CV21-004, 5400 Cascade Road. Request for modification of conditions to Z2014-001 to update the site plan and change requirements for road improvements with the concurrent variance to reduce the string buffer. It's located in District 1. I'll entertain a motion. Um. I move to postpone the public hearing for the final decision for 22-002 and CV21-004 to the May 10th public hearing and the May 24th um, council meeting um, to address so, so the developer could continue, continue to meet with the community on their concerns. Second. It's been properly moved and seconded. Please sound the vote. Motion to postpone. Council Member Rao? Yes. Councilmember Gums? Yes. Councilmember Willis? Yes. 
Councilmember Sebastian? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Reeves? Aye. Councilmember Williams? Yes. That item was approved unanimously. Postponement. All right, please sound the next item. Next item, uh, we're at agenda items, part one, first section, city council governance. First reading of an ordinance to amend the city of South Fulton's charter, article three, organization of government, general authority and ordinances, section 3.21, submission of ordinances to the mayor and for other lawful purposes. This is the first reading and sponsored by Councilmember Williams. Councilwoman Williams. Um, yes, thank you. Um, as the clerk said, this is a first read. Um, I believe that I previously said at our March 22nd meeting um, all that I have to say about this at this time. Seeing no one in the queue, you mind putting that queue up for us as well? Thank you. All right, uh, please sound the next item. Next item is item 20. This is also a first reading of an ordinance of the city of South Fulton, Georgia to amend requirements and processes for proposed ordinances and resolutions and for other lawful purposes. This is sponsored by council members Rao, Willis, Williams, and Gums. First read. Dr. Rao. Uh, well, this particular ordinance seeks to make sure we have uh, work sessions that are operating efficiently so it spells out, um, as we do with our council me uh, meetings, the format for the work sessions. It's the first read, so no additional comment needed. Okay. Um, all right, please sound the next item. Next item is in item that was added to the agenda. This is an ordinance to amend Title I Administration Chapter 3, Mayor and Council of the Code of Ordinances of the City of South Fulton, Georgia, relating to decorum at council meetings. This is the second reading, and this is sponsored by Council Member Rao. Dr. Rao. This particular ordinance seems, um, seeks to make sure we operate in the most professional way in these meetings going forward, and I think we all should be held to the same standards and so um, I move that we uh, adopt the ordinance. It's been properly moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, please sound the vote. Roll call vote, Council Member Rao? Yes. Council Member Gums? Yes. Council Member Willis? Yes. Council Member Sebastian? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Reeves? Aye. Council Member Williams? Yes. That item is approved unanimously. All right, please sound the next item. Next item is also an item that was added to the agenda. It's a resolution to amend resolution number 2018-00106, requiring certain protocols for members of the public making comments and for other lawful purposes. This is sponsored by Councilmember Williams. Councilmember Williams? Um, yes, thank you. Um, as the clerk has indicated, this is a first read and there's no additional comment. This is actually a resolution, so oh, we're a, voting on it today. A resolution? Yes. We Resolutions don't. only require one read. So oh, we'll one read. On okay. Today. Well, thank you. Um, so this is to amend public comment to ensure that individuals wishing to make, that there's sufficient time for people to make public comments who want to make public comments and that there is a proper decorum and order that is being observed and adhered to during the public comment process. Thank you. Councilwoman Willis. Yes. Um, I just, I move to keep. I do just want to, I do just want to note, um, I, I understand, so point of, point of order, if I could, if I could acknowledge myself for, uh, if I could acknowledge myself for a point of order, the decorum ordinance that uh, we are on the first read of, the decorum ordinance states that uh, every council member will have a, a time to talk. So we can move the previous question today, but I do believe the decorum ordinance will change that in the future. 
Um, so the previous question has been moved. Please sound the next, I mean, please uh, call the vote. Actually, we need a, a motion and a right. second. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. I, I move. Um, I move that we adopt the resolution to amend. Wait, no, I'm sorry. She moved the previous question. So we need a second for the previous question? Well, there was no motion on the floor. Okay. So you All right. Move yet. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I move adoption of the, or, of the resolution. Second. I thought so, too, but do we have to vote on it or do we not? Yeah, I'll defer to it, but there was not a motion on the floor, so. Uh, no, Councilwoman Willis moved the previous question, which is a motion to close debate. I think we needed a second and a vote on that. That's what I was saying earlier. And we did get a second, right. but we did not take a vote on it. Right. So we're voting on the previous question now? All right, which closed the discussion. Uh, sound the vote, please. Councilman Morrow? Yes. Councilmember Gums? Yes. Councilmember Willis? Councilmember Sebastian? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Reeves? Aye. Right. Councilmember Williams? Yes. All right. Uh, discussion is closed. Uh, all right. I will take a motion for this resolution. I move adoption of the resolution. It's been properly moved and seconded. Mr. Clerk, please sound the vote. Councilman Barra? Yes. Councilmember Gums? Yes. Councilmember Willis? Councilmember Sebastian? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Reed? Aye. Councilmember Williams? Yes. That item is approved unanimously. All right, please sound the next item. We're at item 21, second reading of an ordinance to repeal the city of South Fulton face coverings or mass ordinance, number 2021-016, requiring face covering or masks to be worn in the city while indoors to help combat the spread of COVID-19 and for other purposes. This is sponsored by Councilwoman Willis. Doc, is, I see Councilwoman Rao. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm on the wrong one. Yes, Councilwoman Willis. I move that we approve this measure because I, while I do think that it is important for us to individually decide where we should wear a mask and I, I do wear a mask a lot. It's going to be quite hard to enforce this when everyone else is um, not making this mandate. And so um, to put this uh, burden on our officers, um, it's, it's, it's going to be quite hard. So uh, I move that we approve this measure. Second. It's been properly moved and seconded. Mr. C any discussion? Mr. Clerk, please sound the vote. Roll call vote. Councilmember Rao? Yes. Councilmember Gums? Yes. Councilmember Willis? Yes. Councilmember Sebastian? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Reeves? Aye. Councilmember Williams? Yes. That item is approved unanimously. All right, please sound the next item. Next item is item 22, request council approval of an emergency ordinance declaring a state of emergency in the city of South Fulton, providing for city meetings to be held virtually providing for an effective date for other lawful purposes, sponsored by Councilmember Rao. Dr. Rao? I move that we approve the 30-day emergency ordinance. So moved. Second. It's been properly moved and seconded. Any discussion? I have several things to say, but it is our anniversary, so I am just going to hold them but I will note that we are now about to pass an, emergen an ordinance declaring a state of emergency in the city of South Fulton after passing an ordinance lifting our mask mandate. There's no other discussion. Mr. Clerk, you can yeah. sound the vote. Well, if you want to go there, let's have a discussion. All right. Dr. Rao. Um, Mayor, we have had this discussion a number of times. You know the wheel of the body of this council but you continue to politicize this issue. This gives us the flexibility. Uh, for those who don't understand anything as it relates to this has to be in place if there's any shift in our numbers. And that is the intent of it. As you see, we are sitting in a meeting as we are today. So this offers us the flexibility. So let's not do that. So um, call for the vote. You do the roll call, hold on. 
Councilman Willis is now in the queue. And um, I, I do agree, this should not be politicized. And, and the, the will of this council was to give people flexibility uh, for us to have ver uh, our work sessions virtually, for the boards to be allowed to meet virtually if they choose to desire. And so we're, this pandemic that we are, um, have been dealing with for two years, the one thing that it has taught us is that we have to allow flexibility. Thank you. Councilman Sebastian. Um, I wanna make sure that I understand what we're trying to do. I, I get it that we, we are still in the middle of a pandemic. Um, a lot of companies are going back in person or at least increasing the number of days that our employees go to work. Um, and I wanna make sure what we're doing by this particular ordinance is not making a decision that certain of our meetings are going to be held virtually um, and others in person. Because I, I don't see the difference between having some in person and having some virtually, to be quite honest. I personally don't. I like the option of having things virtually. Um, obviously, I've worked virtually for um, maybe six, seven years now, even before the pandemic. So I like that option. It's going to be more efficient. You can even get people to participate more um, using a, a virtual me method. However, um, I want to make sure what we're saying, what we're not saying is that our work sessions will definitely to be um, virtual while our council meetings would be in person. If, if that's what we're saying, I'm, I'm not quite sure I'm, I'm done with that. But either way we, we decide to do it, I'll, I'll be here either way. Yeah, that's what we agreed upon. But you can vote, vote it up or down. Roger. Can you call for the vote, please? Hearing no other discussion, Mr. Clerk, will you please call the vote? We have a motion uh, by Councilman Burrell, second by Councilman Willis to approve. Roll call vote, Councilman Burrell. Yes. Councilmember Gunn. Yes. Councilmember Willis. Yes. Councilmember Sebastian. Yes. Count Mayor Pro Tem Reeves. Nay. Councilmember Williams. Yes. That item is approved, five and one. All right, thank you. Would you please sound the next item? Next item is Roman numeral 11. Uh, we're at the intermission. Is it, uh, we, we are actually quite ahead of schedule. Is it the we pleasure of the body to keep going? All right, well, we're gonna keep going. Okay. Um, please sound the next item. Okay, next item is agenda items part two, number 23 under economic development and planning, Old National Highway Livable Centers Initiative, LCI project, introduction and presentation. Madam City Manager. Thank, thank you, Mayor. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, I have Rebecca Kiefer, our Interim Community Development Director, who will give a presentation at this time. Very, very much, Mayor and City Council. I just wanted to introduce uh, Casey from the collaborative firm. We thought it was important to uh, come before you and introduce the Old National Highway LCI project. Uh, while there's not any active uh, verbal public participation tonight. We did want to kick off the project and notify everyone that it is uh, uh, beginning now. Uh, so I'll, I'll turn it over to Casey. Thank you. Yes, we're uh, trying to get it up Perfect. now. Perfect, thank you. I can knock this off, but if you start, uh, it'll no pull problem. up on the screen. I'll do a quick introduction. Thank you so much, mayor, council members, um, your whole team, and uh, the residents, whether virtual or in person, um, we're really excited about this project here in the city. Yeah, <laughs> normally I'm a screamer, so. Uh, <laughs> so we are here to kind of just kick this off tonight so people can kind of have an overview in their mind and start thinking about it. We will be coming out um, in the upcoming months with full community meetings where people will actually be able to dive in, to participate, to look at maps, to actually share thoughts and all of this. So this is just kind of a little bit of a primer to get everyone ready. Almost there still. No problem.
if we keep having these connection problems, we're going to have to get old school and get an overhead projector. Overhead projector. <laughs> okay, here we go. Let's see. Perfect, thank you. Once again, I am Casey Kurzik. I am the project manager, and I am with the collaborative firm. We can go to the next slide. Um, I do wanna give everyone a little bit of an overview about this initiative. So this is a grant that was awarded to the city um, by the ARC, and it is the Livable Centers Initiative Program. And just a little background, this program has been around since 2000, and the LCI program has invested $312 million in more than 120 communities throughout this region. And this helps to pay for the planning studies, which is actually the reason we are here tonight. And then it also has supplemental funds that can be awarded after the study is completed and adopted. And those are things such as transportation, um, in transportation projects like sidewalks, intersection improvements, and bringing to life those visions of the corridor. Next slide. So I want to take everyone back a little bit because this actually started back in 2004. Um, in the county itself, um, they were awarded the Old National Highway LCI project once again. It has been periodically updated, but last year it was fully funded to actually be redone so we are really starting not from scratch but from the beginning and we are inventorying everything going out into the community talking with business owners with residents with yourself with your staff um, to really begin this process all over again now with us um, we have brought a robust team to help on this project so once again we have the collaborative firm we are headquartered in East Point. We are partnering with Kim Lee Horn, with the Sizemore Group, and with T. Dallas Smith and Company. When it comes to our organization, we actually brought everyone to the team together because of the specialties they bring. So when it comes to the collaborative firm, we will be spearheading um, the planning, the economic development, and the public outreach. Um, Kim Lee Horn and us will be partnering together on the transportation planning and then the design team with Sizemore and ourselves will spearhead and then we also have T. Dallas Smith who is really coming in as an expert of those land and property values and the ownership and the businesses along that corridor. Now we already have some goals and some of the most of these goals were actually defined by yourself. Um, through this initial process with the ARC. And that is to encourage a diversity of housing, employment, commercial, shopping, and recreational land uses that are accessible by people of all ages, abilities, and income levels. Provide access to a range of travel modes, including transit, roadways, walking, and biking trails, and to increase roadway connectivity to provide optimal access for all users. Foster public-private partnerships and sustain community support that promotes the involvement of all stakeholders. And to encourage mixed income residential neighborhoods, employment centers, shopping centers, and recreation options. So as we explore the corridor a little bit, 
Um, you see uh, in the blue is actually our boundaries for the corridor. So we will actually begin looking at properties um, just north of the interstate. That is actually College Park's jurisdiction. And we have made sure um, with your planning staff that we've invited them to the core committee. So that's an internal technical review committee. So they're actually seeing everything that we're doing as well because we know that that's actually a gateway into your corridor. So we're partnering with them, hoping that they will also strive for the same items. As we carry on down the corridor, um, as if you're familiar with it, the bottom of the corridor will actually end just past the new shopping center that was developed and that has the LA Fitness and will house your new Main Street. And then there are several components within this plan, so I'm not trying to overwhelm everyone because we will address all of these through the the whole process. We um, will be looking at all of the existing conditions along the corridor. So that's your land use, um, that's your transportation, that's connectivity, those are your business owners. Um, we'll even be looking at some crime statistics and things like that just to make sure that we know where the corridor lies. We will be doing a full market study. So that will look at your housing options, your commercial, your retail, um, your employment centers, and it will actually project the possibility of those items coming back in. We will promote two to three catalytic sites with design elements. Those three sites will be fully um, located within the city of South Fulton's um, jurisdictions. We will identify placemaking strategies, classify transportation and pedestrian move improvements, and then we will also have a full implementation strategy for you all. So that will include a 100-day work plan. And what that's designed to do is kick off the initiative. So in that first 100 days, we're looking at things that are easy to accomplish and are actually minimal cost to the city. It will also be followed by a five-year implementation strategy. This will once again look at all of those components we've been talking about, housing, commercial, um, transportation, placemaking, cultural events, all of that. And we will actually be tying it back to an actual project and a cost per perspective. And then we will also have a monitoring program in place for you. So as you begin to start checking off these boxes and these programs, you'll actually be able to account for them. So I do want to go back and give a little more information about some of the items I just talked about, because some of them are really hard to think about in your head. Um, when we were talking about the catalytic site design, I actually have two examples up here. And this is what we will be looking at on those, on those three sites we're projecting. And that is to actually implement a strategy and an action plan to move the, plant, the corridor forward. Um, so, depending on our final layout, you will actually see specific sites, whether they are vacant or whether they have the possi possibility of being redeveloped, and we will actually project those land uses, that's actually what's is shown on the left, and then potential renderings of the, how that site could look like in the future on the right. We will also look at transportation strategies. So once again, looking at enhancing all of the mobility options, making sure that there's proper speeds and turning movements, ensuring safe pedestrian crossings. And then um, one of the things that we found here is we really wanna make sure that we can have connections into the city parks and possibly those neighborhood parks. Um, this is an example of basic of uh, what a street diagram could look like. This one was actually done in downtown Fairburn. So once again, you'll have renderings like this when we're done. And then overall corridor improvements. And the idea here is really to create a vision and goals for the corridor. And so people really know that they've arrived when they've reached that old national corridor. And we've already talked about a little bit that those are gateways into the corridor. There'll be a north gateway and a south gateway. So we're looking at those, um, those uh, it could be the light poles, it could be the signage, it could actually be the landscaping, and those plans will also be spelled out through that corridor. Also in this phase, we'll look at recommending policies and programs to implement the vision. This could be including comprehensive plan updates, 
It could possibly be zoning ordinance changes, um, maybe some map amendments, and those placemaking strategies. And then, of course, all of our process involve a robust public involvement. Um, our goal is always to educate, to engage, and to inform. So throughout this whole process, we will find different ways to reach different people throughout the community, throughout the business owners, throughout the property owners. Um, we are, well, we started with your planning staff, of course. We've also had your core technical committee. Now we're here meeting with you all as the elected officials. We'll be taking um, items to the planning commission. We'll also be updating you regularly. We will have a community survey. We do, will have focus groups and roundtables, and those will focus right along the corridor. So what we find through the process, we'll actually bring those people to the table through that process to either help us design it, and then once again, bring them back so they can actually, um, we can get feedback from them on what we've heard and what we've designed. And then of course, we'll have a series of community meetings through this entire process. And our meetings are really designed to, um, to be interactive. Um, so we will have different mapping exercises, different choice advertisements. When we get actually into the design of those three sites, those will really be hands-on in a working environment. And then, like I said, we, we have been starting this process, so we're bringing it here, but we, we've already been working on a lot of things. So I just wanted to highlight some of the discussions that we've heard so far um, from the team that's involved in the residents. And that is to um, the promote the mixed use, the idea of shopping, dining, making the corridor a destination. Um, employment centers. So as we've gone through and we've talked to a lot of the businesses, they also want to know that they have a daytime crowd so that lunches can be covered and things of that nature. And also when you have more people in the daytime area, that's more people that's walking around, more people dining, more people shopping on the corridor. Um, transportation and mobility, I can tell you we saw some wild things happening out on the streets just on some turning movements and um, uh, I, you're shaking your head, you must know, uh, people crossing the streets where it's just not safe. So we will actually be focusing on that as well. Um, we did go over some statistics about public safety because we do always want to keep that in the back of our mind. You know, we're designing for a whole neighborhood and, and there are things going on in different areas. Once again, the community connections, um, making sure that um, the residents in those neighboring communities can find it easy and accessible to walk to their amenities. Um, we've also located areas that can be truly preserved and protected potential open space areas, park areas, things like that. And then also looking at arts and cultural events. I know your main street will be moving in down there, so there'll probably be way more events going on, and we've heard that. And then we've also heard that, um, that we need to promote the small business down there, because they are really going to be that forefront of the corridor and its economic impact. And then for a timeline, like I said, right now, we're really kind of working on those existing conditions analysis, and we're diving into that market study analysis. And then in the summer, we will be working and focusing on those catalytic site designs and illustrations. And then towards the end of the year, September, October, we'll be taking all the information we have, putting them into an implementation plan, and then we will bring it back to everyone um, for official adoption in early 2023, late 2022. So that is everything I have for you tonight. I hope you all are excited as we are, so thank you. I will entertain any questions or comments. Um, I'm going to start with myself and just first say yes, I was nodding. I'm going to give a shout out to Mr. Sharp who is watching online. It takes him an inordinate amount of time to cross Old National Highway to catch the bus. So uh, hopefully we'll make that more walkable. Uh, any other? And we are bringing Marta to the table as well, just so we Perfect. Dr. Rao. Yes, uh, thank you for that presentation. I'm excited to see that we are finally um, getting to the point where we're casting the reimagined Old National Corridor. I think um, 
I know I'm excited about the, the work that will be done over the next year and, and um, looking forward for our staff, um, our Main Street staff and our uh, city management staff to make sure that we can uh, advance this as quick as possible. So I'm, I'm excited. Perfect. Thank you. All right, seeing no one else in the queue, Mr. Clerk, please sound the next item. Thank you again. Thank you. The next item is item 25. This is the first reading of an ordinance to amend the city of South Fulton zoning ordinance for the purpose of amending the regulations for the initiation of zoning changes and for other lawful purposes. Uh, community Development and Regulatory Affairs. is uh, related to amendments um, addressing the rezoning, uh, when rezonings can come before you after uh, they've already had a denial. So it's cleaning up some of the language that was a little bit um, inconsistent internally and then also putting a very distinct nine month time period on uh, when a reapplication can occur. Thank you. Councilman Sebastian. I just want to thank our staff for thinking this through. Um, I went through that in detail and I think it's a very good plan. Um, I, I think we need that we needed some additional structure um, around this because sometimes it seems as if things come up and get thrown as a, at us, you know, in quick succession. Right, and it, it gives us um, the opportunity to check to make sure when people bring things back up that indeed they, they have significant changes um, to the proposals that they're making. So, thank you. Dr. Rell. This is a question. Um, when I was looking at the initiation of rezoning, the previous language um, under subsection A spoke to the fact that an application to rezone property or request special use approval may be initiated by the property owner or the city council. Um, the revision takes, doesn't have that same language. Why was that omitted? I'm not sure. I, I can take a look at it between now and the, the second read to, to kind of make sure that it's still allowing. Uh, is the concern that city council doesn't have the ability to exactly. initiate? Okay. Exactly. Yeah. So I, I just want the um, the first uh, 80301A to read the same as it was. I'm fine with everything else. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Seeing no further comments, Mr. Clerk, please sound the next item. Next item is item 26 under Parks and Recreation. It's discussion on time and date of the next Urban Redevelopment Agency, also known as the URA meeting. Uh, the mayor has proposed Tuesday, May 10th, 2022, work session for the next meeting. Mayor Khalid. Uh, so I did want to just check in with uh, Adam City Manager, you and our, our, our finance team, if you all would be ready and the Parks Department to just, we haven't had an official URA meeting, even though this board is the URA, but we haven't had an official URA meeting presentation update on projects and things like that. Would, we, would you be ready to do that by May 10th? I think May 10th should be able to work for us. Um, I would need to check with, um, we would include uh, public works as well. Um, so can I circle back with the staff mayor and then send the council an email? Yeah, well, okay. I'm uh, I am going to uh, poll council now, but uh, okay. I'll start with uh, Councilwoman Willis. There's an item that I am requesting I pulled off and I sent via email to be on the work session, the CVB board. So would that have a bearing on that? Are you willing to do the URA and that? Because Ms. Matthews needs to present to this board. Yeah, ab absolutely. Okay, then I'm fine. I, I, I believe though, correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Clerk or Mr. Attorney, that the URA 
board meeting would have to be a separate meeting. We'd have to dismiss this body and then adjourn as URA board. So we would either have to do it before the four o'clock work session or after the six o'clock zoning hearing. So I don't, if, is there a pleasure of, of counsel? And, and do, you, do we know um, to help us make this decision how many zoning cases we might be anticipating in that zoning hearing? Staff, do you have an idea how many we may have? Quite a number for May, six to eight, uh, with a couple expected withdrawals and then um, some other accompanying uh, ordinances or otherwise. So All quite right. another. Thank you. So it might be the case if we are going to have a two-hour work session and then a two-hour zoning hearing, we may not want to do the ERA hearing on the same day, but right. I yeah. serve at the pleasure of the council. I, I was going to ask yeah. would the Separate mayor and council day. be open to another date for, and just uh, have that as a separate meeting? Uh, yes, Councilman Willis. Would it be possible, is the URA meeting going to be more than an hour? It could. Most likely. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, because I was going to suggest that we do it at three and then have the work session at four. But if it's not, if, if you all think it's going to, because the, the, if I don't know what else is going to be on the work session agenda, but if that's the, if the CVB board presentation is the only thing, I don't know if you anticipate having anything else. I mean, that will allow more time. I mean, that would be a question for council. Does anyone else have any, and I do see you, Councilman Sebastian, does anyone else have any pressing items for our work session in two weeks? Then perhaps we could do a URA meeting from three to five, a work session from five to six, mm -hmm. and a zoning hearing from six I'm to eight. Okay. It sounds like we have some consensus, but I need to hear from council member Sebastian, go ahead. Yeah, I was gonna just suggest, Mr. Mayor, thank you for recognizing me, that we, um, keep from starting too early in the day because you know some of us have other lives and number one secondly um there is um some i've already got feedback from some citizens that even starting these meetings at four o'clock do not um, provide them with the opportunity to participate so the earlier we go in in the day it means that we're going to be creating even more of an issue for those people who want to participate and might be at work so I don't mind saying a little later um, in the evening, but I want to caution us not to start too early in the day. Let me, well, let me propose this then. Could we do um, the work session from four to five, the zoning hearings from five to seven, or the work session from four to five, the URA from five to seven, and the uh work session from i'm so confused what did i just say <laughs> work session zoning zoning. zoning no no the zoning at the end because that that's what residents care the most about the work session from four to five the ura from five to seven and the zoning hearings from seven to nine i'll be fine with that the only, uh, only, only thing for consideration is I, I, don't, I think uh, it's already been advertised right. for zoning for, for next six. month already. Right. Is, it, is it too late to re-advertise it? We advertise at, uh, it for, to begin at 6 p.m. And, and yeah, it's too late. Well, I'm going to ask the, the pleasure of counsel. I open it up to the wisdom of the I council. I think the attorney was saying something different. You might want to ask. Oh. Oh, okay. Do, Dr. Rowe? Um, maybe we could still do it in the window. We definitely can't um, change the zoning hearing, but maybe we can do, do uh, Councilwoman Willis, do you think your presentation would take more than 30 minutes? No, but I think we had consensus. I mean, I, I hear what um, Council Member Sebastian is saying, but we may have had consensus to okay. start at three. So I, I would, if Mary, if you don't mind, if you would check and see what everybody else is saying. Well, I wonder if, if, if your presentation would only, to try and accommodate yeah. everyone, if your presentation would only take